Eye on South Asia is brought to you by Wells Fargo. Together, we'll go far. Welcome back to Eye on South Asia. Prakash, we're going to move to uh, one story in the community, uh, a local story, and this is just devastating. It's the uh, story about Diviendu Sinha, and this occurred nearly two years ago in Old Bridge, New Jersey, and um, the, uh, the trial of um, uh, the story is going to begin in this month, and basically what happened was that Diviendu Sinha was beaten to death and this was at night when he was walking with his family and um, allegedly um, sources have said that five guys came over and in a random unprovoked act of violence they started beating on um, Mr. Sinha and when his kids and wife tried to prevent it they were also injured but Mr. Sinha uh, passed away from that incident um, from blunt force trauma to the head. So regarding this incident, um, we have the Old Bridge Police Chief, uh, Robert Bonfante. He said that the preliminary findings um, indicated the assault was not racially motivated. And so many Indian Americans have been um, you know, ha, have alleged that this is the motivation behind it. I mean, what else could it be? It's it's so random, um, and uh, yeah, the the um, main person charged in this crime is um, Contreras, and he is um, going to be in this uh, trial, and basically. Um, they wanted to find out, you know, what's the cause of this and what provoked him to, you know, convict this um, random act of violence. And what happened with, you know, his family has just devastated his wife and his children. And, um, you know, his, his wife has uh, released a statement and she just said that, no one should ever have to experience such horrific acts of violence and she's just completely devastated and trying to put their lives back together. It's very, very difficult, but um, hopefully when the trial starts, there will be justice and we offer our prayers to Mr. Sinha's family and hopefully justice will be served. So. That's that's one major story that was uh, being followed, and incidentally, there was a lot of um, uh, talk as to why this case hadn't been taken up sooner. And one of the reasons, um, at least many Indian Americans have said, is that in New Jersey, another story has been going alongside this and has literally like taken the attention away and that is the story of uh, Darun Ravi and his um, trial regarding um, the secret spying on his roommate, uh, his gay roommate, and um, his roommate committed suicide. So basically, you know, regarding this um, verdict, a lot of supporters of Darun Ravi, they have said that, you know, this verdict is showing him to be, um, you know, biased and against homosexuals. And this is something that Ravi does not want um, to be portrayed about him. And he said that he's never going to regret uh, not taking the plea because he said that he wants to prove that he's not a bigot, you know, and he says that if anything, you know, one of the reasons um, he had videotaped um, his roommate was that he had a kind of suspicion of this other partner that uh, his roommate was with, 
and it was almost a kind of concern. But um, yeah, I mean, he he alleges that you know that that was that's not his personality. He's not against gays. And Dave Mucker, he's one of the leading community leaders in uh, leading community voices on Indian American issues in New Jersey. He has said that, you know, if Ravi would have been from any other religion, he would have tre been treated differently. He says that just the fact that he's a Hindu and he's really from a minority group, um, I mean, typically just kind of, um, you know, um, I don't know, like he, he's just uh, a minority and he is being treated as if he is a bigot against another minority group or homosexuals. And he also says that, you know, there's Hindu phobia and, you know, this could have um, sold the tragic suicide of the young uh, Tyler Clementi and made it seem like a hate crime. But he, sa he also says something interesting that it's an open secret that homosexuality has become mainstream in the American system. And he says that there are numerous shows on TV that promote the homosexual uh, lifestyles with famous celebrities and that sort of thing, um, really just kind of glamorizing it. So he says that if anything, um, you know, to say that a person commits suicide when in the media it's showing almost a, a glamorized and somewhat positive image of homosexuality, it, he says that the two things don't add up. So he's saying that there is some bias really more towards Darun Ravi than um, the, the gays. So Yeah, right. I spoke to Dave Makkar uh, during the story I did for Indian Express. Dave is one of the very uh, you know, real champion of the Indian community. And what he was trying to say is very simple. He says they are trying to say South Asians, which means Hindus, are against, you know, gays and lesbians. But he is quoting from text saying that there were Hindu accepted, you know, homosexuality thousands of years ago. We have Ardhan Arishwaran, man and the woman. And then when he talked about gay, there's nothing because you have gay marriages in the country. Many states have permitted gays and lesbians to marry and lead as man and wife or husband and wife. So where's the question of shy? Where's the question of doing something, a criminal act? There's what Dev Merker and other community leaders, including Uma Swaminathan, she's a teacher who has been victimized by the New Jersey state when she was a teacher. They all say there's something more to it than that meets the eye. This is not a mere case of, you know, X, Y, Z or A, B, C, but there's something much more because Darun Ravi is very clearly proved and he said he's not against gays, period. And we don't know why the, the kid committed suicide. We feel very sorry for Clementi to commit suicide. May his soul rest in peace because we know the agony of the parents, you know, that happened. But right. the prosecution failed to investigate had there been any pressure in the family. Has there been any other motive, any other is issues involved driving him to the extent? Because not merely this particular boy would have driven to the extent. It is unplausible. It is not, it's it kind of a little too, too far-fetched yes. to imagine. Mm -hmm. There's something more to it which is a missing link. Mm -hmm. Yes, this boy tweeted. This boy, you know, took the recording. But then he gives a reason that he doesn't want his stuff to be stolen. Mm -hmm. He did it, but he saw in them in that position. Only mistake he made was he, he kind of tweeted. And now the whole family regrets for what happened to Clementi. At the same time, he said, I'm not going to take plea bargain because if he taken a plea, it would have just been 200 hours of community service. It would have been out. Now he's facing deportation. Mm -hmm. He'll be thrown out of the country. But this young Darun Ravi says, I never made a mistake. It's just a prank. Mm -hmm. I didn't want the kid to die. I'm not against if I had taken plea, it would have been against my conscience. Yeah. So here I'm really appreciating the kid because just to escape the prison sentence, he could have lied. Exactly. He could have said something which has not happened, mm -hmm. but he didn't do that. So this is where we have to see something behind 
the story behind the story as to what is really going on. And people like Umar Swaminathan and Dave Mekar were really leading the cause because the New Jersey has been kind of a state where minorities have been persecuted, the teachers who are from uh, India, Hindus have been, they have been given, you know, kind of, all kind of hardships. They have been forced to quit. In fact, Umar Swaminathan told in the interview to Indian Express that there have been many teachers who have been kind of not given tenure because they are from India. Mm-hmm. Though they want Indian teachers, they don't want to give them tenure. So something wrong somewhere in the system. So I think we need to fix that before we put the blame on the kid or the teacher or whoever it is. Again, when, when we talk about the Sinha's case, he's an excellent professor, he's a brilliant brain. I mean, he's an amazing teacher. He was murdered cold blood in front of the whole family. The family could not take the trauma. Now, where is the justice? And right. you say there's not a bias crime, then why he was murdered? Mm-hmm. He was murdered because people don't like his face or didn't, they, or they didn't like his accent. Something beyond it. Mm-hmm. So this is something like two different, you know, tangent of a whole case. On one case, you see he's biased, he's anti-gay. Another case, is a murder. At least that's a suicide. Right. Here's a cold-blooded murder. And they're saying to there's no racial No motivation. racial bias. Mm-hmm. Come on, give me a break. Right. There's something different to it. Exactly. And as you said, you know, Tyler Clemente's medical records, school records, all of those things have not been released to the media. And if they were, perhaps there'd be something in there that would provide the missing link Even in the Even the story. suicide note has not been made public. <laughs> right. Why? Right. <laughs> and, you know, his uh, Darun Ravi supporters are saying it was a childish prank and he was just an 18-year-old kid. So we'll, we'll see how that opinion um, floats and what, what becomes of uh, Darun Ravi. So um, moving on uh, to a different note, we have the TNF convention to be held in May. And this is by the Tamil Nadu Foundation. It's an annual convention, and this year it's going to be held in the Hotel Hilton North in Houston, Texas, on during the Memorial Day weekend of May 25th. And is that a three-day or a couple-of-day event? Yeah. Tamil Nadu Foundation has been doing a wonderful job of charity and education. This is one of the national Tamil organizations in this country which is devoting its time and energy in voluntarily donating to educate the poor kids who are unable to go to school or school dropouts. Mm -hmm. And they collect money and send it to different schools and provide basic education. This time the convention is going to be held in Houston under the leadership of Dr. Devan Aigam, Sam Kanapan, Dr. Appan, and the very other people are very much dedicated, Rajan Radhakrishnan, they're doing it. And we're getting a lot of people from India, like Suhasni Mani Ratnam, who's the wife of the famous director, Mani Ratnam. Mm-hmm. And then we have Pushpavan and Kupasami and Kupasami folk singers. We have a lot, many people coming from India to educate and entertain the people who go. I'm sure it's going to be a wonderful event for Tamils to attend and also contribute their might towards educating the poor kids in India. Right. So they accept a lot of donations and they also educate the um, the people coming to the meeting about what they're doing with the donations yes, and yes. those sorts of things. There are various plans. You can yeah. pick up whatever sponsorship you want. Right. And then you will be helping a poor children in Tamil Nadu mm-hmm. to study and come up in life. Compared to other Tamil organizations, Tamil Nadu Foundation has been really doing a fantastic cause which is worthy of appreciation. Right. Well, that sounds like a great event to be at, and hopefully, um, you know, it'll it'll be a really great event. And maybe uh, if if I'm off that weekend, I'll be able to attend. Will you be going as well? I think so. Okay, awesome. Well, that's all the time that we have for this week's episode of Eye on South Asia. Keep watching us week after week, same time, same place. Also, catch us on YouTube. You can find all the latest episodes. And you can also find us on Facebook, facebook.com slash eye on South Asia. So until next week, I'm Bob Navanan signing off.
Eye on South Asia is brought to you by Wells Fargo. Together, we'll go far.